Paul the Pipe Guy here, live from Rochester, New York, and it is Thirsty Thursday. Yeah. All right. So here we are on Thirsty Thursday. It just started pouring rain outside. Hopefully we'll get some thunder and lightning. So for uh, Thirsty Thursday, oh, and by the way, cheers. have to start out with a sip of Paul the Pipe Guy's favorite adult beverage, Bush Beer. Yeah, and I kind of need to shave, too. Uh, so anyway, so uh, we're going to kick off Thirsty Thursday. Uh, yesterday I did a video on <clears throat> how to uh, honey cure your pipes to get, to accelerate the carbon buildup. And we have our Mr. Brog bowl number 89 stand up here. And what I did is I, uh, yesterday, as you saw maybe on the video, I swabbed the entire inside, turned her upside down so it wouldn't fill the draft hole up and the stem and everything uh, on the shank with honey that would just plug things up. And I came home and the briar soaked it up nice. There was still a nice coating of wonderful honey. So what I did is I loaded this up with um, Lane Bulk Hazelnut, which burns extremely well. So after you let your pipe rest upside down, as to not fill up the draft hole, the honey kind of gets a little more thick, you know, and uh, kind of hardens a little bit, but it's still pretty sloppy. Uh, but you want to use a good burning tobacco something that burns very well you know if you take you know plug tobacco sometimes that doesn't burn so great but you know you take some regular loose pipe tobacco that you know is going to burn well because you want to create that heat to burn the honey and it converts it to carbon and you can do this multiple times to your pipe if you want and if you, are, let's say if you have a half broke in pipe, you can still do the honey treatment. Just make sure that you go and swab out any loose carbon or, I mean, don't grind it down to bare wood again, but just make sure that any loose tobacco or anything is out of there so nothing is trapped in your carbon buildup. So we're going to light this one up, and this is uh, Lane Bulk Hazelnut, which burns extremely well, and just fill the bowl all the way up to the top, because you are you have that honey that's in there, and you want it all to burn. Mm. I haven't smoked Lane Bolt hazelnut in a while. And don't be afraid to smoke your pipe for the first time a little hard with that honey in there. I've done several pipes this way and it does create a nice little build up there which is what you want because it's going to protect the briar, protect it from overheating, and also the carbon buildup or cake, as they call it, on the inside of the bowl will absorb excess moisture. Mm. So I'm hitting this pretty hard. Want to get the heat, some heat on the inside of that bowl. Mm. Well, looks like it rained for about 15 minutes. I'm pretty hard and stopped. <laughs> My uh, landlord will be happy because all the three raised garden beds got watered. He won't have to go out there and do that tonight. 
Oh, yeah. And she's starting to heat up a little bit. Not bad, though. Yeah. I missed the slain bulk hazelnut. It's good stuff. The room note is phenomenal. We're going to let this rest for a moment. And uh, so the second pipe that I have, it's a, uh, it's a K. Woody Model 600, bowl number 08. And look at how beautiful the briar is on this. It's hard really to see in the video. Eventually I'm going to be getting a new phone with a better camera. But the briar on this is unbelievable, and these K Woody five and six hundreds, if you can get, you can get them inexpensive. They were made between 1957 and 1969, and uh, just great pipes. They, it was actually an entry level K Woody pipe, the five and six hundred. They sold millions of them. But they all have like premium, premium briar on them. I think sometimes maybe, you know, when a company sells so much of one thing, they run out of the regular briar and they start putting nice premium briar on it. Because this, this briar is just gorgeous. I mean, that looks like flame grain K. Woody briar. It's that beautiful. Mm. And in this one, we have some Scotty's Butternut Burley. So we're going to light that one up. But first, we must clear the palette. Ah, yes. So I did promise you folks that I do have a few antique advertisements that I bought off of eBay probably about a year or so ago <clears throat> that I would share with you. So I'll, uh, I didn't get those together. So when it's time, I'll just pause the video and uh, I know exactly where they are and I'll grab them. Yeah. So um, how's everybody's week going? Yeah. It's hard to believe it's September 9th already. My gosh, where's the time go? September 9th, 2021. Hmm. The Scotty's Buttered Up Burley. is just so good it, it has a buttery vanilla type of taste more buttery but it's not overpowering it's not an overpowering aromatic and such a smooth smoke Scotty's Butternut Burley you should try it Just a wonderful blend. So smooth. This is an all-day smoke. This will never give you tongue bite. You could smoke 20 bowls of this a day and you still wouldn't get tongue bite. Burns well. Burns cool. It's a great overall smoke. The room note on this also is phenomenal. Oh. 
so good to get home and smoke a nice pipe. This K Woody 600 is an excellent, excellent smoker too, by the way. Now this K Woody came to me almost, I mean it came to me in like brand new condition. There's no teeth chatter, anything on it, and it was made between 57 and 1969. And um, it did have a sufficient amount of carbon buildup in it that a perfectly broken in pipe should have, which is about the thickness of a United States dime, which for my friends across the palm or pond or in Europe or wherever you might be, <clears throat> the thickness of a dime is probably about 1.5 to 2 millimeters thick. So I just left it. I mean, I sanitized it. I went through, um, you know, with pipe cleaners and uh, Everclear, which is a very high alcohol. It's 190 proof, which is 95% pure grain alcohol you can buy it at the liquor store uh, I guess that some of the people overseas can't get it but you can in the United States and it's a great way to sanitize your pipe this one was perfect I didn't want to take it down to bare wood it was broken in nicely why mess with a good thing now I've gotten some other estate pipes which this is that you could barely fit a number two pencil down inside of it. There was so much cake buildup, at least a quarter inch of cake buildup on some of these pipes. I don't know how anybody could ever smoke anything out of that. I mean, would you have a pencil in there and just like shove tobacco down in that little tiny, tiny, tiny hole because so much carbon buildup over time just filled the bowl until it was down to about that much. Basically unsmokable. That's a true pipe smoker's pipe. Now this pipe I kind of been smoking it moderately and it's not getting hot. It's because of that carbon buildup, that cake on the inside of the bowl. <clears throat> I hope you'll be able to see these advertisements. I'm going to go get them now. I'm going to put the video on pause and I'll be right back in just a moment. Okay, and so we're back. So I bought this one K Woody ad. I think this was out of yeah December third, nineteen fifty-five, and it actually has two ads. It's got an ad on the back here for Sunbeam, different kitchen appliances, but on this side, it's an ad for K Woody. And you can see there all the K Woody models for that year, 1959, 55. And it says, you give more than a pipe when you give K Woody. Yeah. Let's see, their Flame Grain Billiard, which I believe was the top end. Yeah, it was the top end. Uh, was $10. <laughs> Back in 1955. That's that bottom one down there. Flame grain. Actually, there's one on here which... Briar Mates Dublin. Pipe and pipe rest. A great value for $12.50. Or you could buy this super grain bulldog. As pictured there for... A whopping five dollars. But you gotta remember in nineteen fifty five people were probably they were making like thirty five dollars a week. Uh most expensive pipe on here is the 
Continental Bent, which was a whopping $25. That's there on top, which I probably should have done the monetary conversions to as compared to today's dollars, but I didn't. But I would suspect that uh, that $25 pipe was probably in today's money worth a couple hundred dollars at least, I would suspect. But it's not uncommon nowadays to, if you want a really good pipe, to spend a couple hundred dollars. All right, now get back in there. You don't wrinkle. All right, so that's one of the, the ads that I purchased off of eBay. Uh, I do have this one which hangs on my wall. It's another K. Woody. And it says, in the 50s, our founders were making pipes which were enjoyed all over America. Meaning the 1850s, not the 1950s. And this ad is from 1945. And the K. Woody pipes back in 1945 ranged from $3.50 to $25. And it's kind of a cool looking it might be hard to see from the reflection it's kind of a cool looking picture in there of a Mississippi River boat or steamer or something and what I did is I uh, actually put this into a frame an antique frame which has got to be easily a hundred years old it's all hand painted uh, I would guess that to be, eh, no, nah, probably 40s or 50s. Probably from the 40s or 50s. So I have that K. Woody ad right there, and it hangs on my wall. Uh, let's see what else we have here in the stack. Oh, this one's a cool one. Uh, let's see what we have here. And this one is out of the Saturday Evening Post. And it says, Buy Victory Bonds. Uh, and this one really doesn't have... Oh, here we go. 1945. So there we are. A nice K. Woody ad showing steam engines and so forth from the 1800s. And that is from 1945. And there's a Meerschaum lined K. Woody pipe, which uh, was the top of their line at that time. The most modern of pipes, <coughs> K. Woody flame grain briar inlaid with Turkish Meerschaum. $12.50, shape number 86B, Apple. And there it is, right there. Out of the Saturday Evening Post. Yeah, pretty cool stuff. So we have that one. And let's see what else we have here in the pile of stuff I've purchased that I have been meaning to frame. And we have yet a another K. Woody ad. K. Woody grew up with America. And this ad is from 1946. Shows a horse and buggy in an 1800s farm town setting. And of course, there are pipes there. Two new pipes for 1946. Pretty cool. We have <clears throat> at the left a flame grain K. Woody yacht shape, 10 bucks. And at the right, a Meerschaum line flame grain K. Woody billiard shape, $12.50. So there we go with that. And these ads are all pristine, like brand new. I mean, they're not even yellowed. 
So let's put this bad boy back in there. I didn't think I had this many. Apparently, it must have gone hog wild. Oh no, us pipe smokers never do that, do we? All right, and let's see what we have coming up next. Uh, we have, if I can get this baby open, we have nothing. We have nothing in there. And then these were some cool prints that I bought uh, <clears throat> called Rifles and Pistols. And there's six of them, I believe. And they were from a famous artist called Bob Wood. And actually, I started off, I found this K. Woody pipe, <clears throat> and it says it was owned in the 1940s by famous art, famous Western artist, Bob Wood. So I looked up Bob Wood and I found his artwork all over the internet. I was like, I gotta have that pipe. So I bought the pipe. I have Bob Woods, one of his actual pipes. And then I saw these prints called Rifles and Pistols. And of course I had to have them. They're very beautiful prints. I still have to have them framed and matted. That's the Harper's Ferry 1807. This is the Colt Walker. He just did all of these paintings and so forth and then turned them into prints. This is on all high quality paper. The Coal Frontier 44. Yeah. The Kentucky Rifle. Then we have the Henry Repeating Rifle, which is still made today. And uh, then we have the Sharps Buffalo Rifle. Like I said, all gorgeous prints on super high quality paper. And Bob Wood's been dead for quite a while. This is another Bob Wood print here. Western print of uh, cowboy shooting Indians. And I think that might be all we have from the Bob Wood collection. And uh, he also, somewhere I have was an invoice where, oh yeah, here it is, where this guy sent me an invoice from where he bought this from Bob Woods Estate, right here. And it's uh, bid card number 57. Oh, it was, yeah. Oh. Had a bunch of cigar boxes, Bob Woods prints, pistols and rifles, cowboy, lone wolf, uh, a lantern, vintage picture frames. Two large vintage ashtrays. Uh, yeah. So that's a certificate of authenticity from the gentleman that actually purchased these directly from Bob Wood's estate. And Bob Wood used to love to smoke a pipe. And I own one of them. I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> Ah, oh, yes. Thirsty Thursday. Ah. So, let's see how our, our honey curing pipe, our Mr. Brog, bowl number 89 stand up pipe. <clears throat> oh, yeah. I can see that cake is building up in there. It's heating that honey up and burning it, turning it to carbon. Now, after your first bowl, after you honey treat it, let it sit overnight, always, always, always upside down. 
and you're going to have honey that's going to run out. <clears throat> Smoke two, three bowls out of it. Make sure that, that all that honey's burned up. Hmm. I hope you enjoyed my collection of uh, the antique cable pipes and the Bob Wood Western prints. I actually got a real good price on those prints. There's six of them. The guy wanted 60 bucks for the whole lot. I offered him 30 and he took it. But, you know, you put those in frames, nice frames. You can line them across the walls. Just a wonderful piece of history. <clears throat> Can't remember if he signed them or not. <coughs> Oh, yeah. I can already see the honey burning in here. Oh, yeah, it's getting charred up good. If you can see that in there, it's probably hard to see in the video. There, we got a fairly good shot at it, but you can see in the front of the pipe up, up here. That she's getting a nice char to the inside of it. And that's what you want. Mm. Like I said, don't be afraid to smoke your pipe a little hard when you're first bowl out of it with the honey but don't overheat the pipe if it's too warm to touch your face if it's too hot to touch your face with the pipe you're overheating it too much and you don't want to do that oh yeah well, anyways, we're going on uh, 29 minutes for a Thirsty's Thursday, so hope everybody has a great rest of their week, and uh, hope you found this Thirsty Thursday was a little different, because I showed you a few things in my collection. We did kind of a part two on the honey treatment of uh, a pipe, where you just load the bowl all the way up to the very top and smoke the heck out of it. Get that nice carbon buildup when you're burning that honey. Just don't overheat it. So anyways, uh, thanks for tuning in for Thirsty Thursday. And we're up to, I believe, 383 subscribers. So I want to thank you guys <clears throat> for subscribing and watching the channel. Um, you know, I posted some uh, something yesterday, uh, a video on... Uh, you know, I'm not getting a lot of responses. Are you guys still watching? Is there something you want differently? Uh, you know, do you guys still like to for Tuesday, Thursday, Thursday? And uh, actually, one of my, I, I got some good responses. <clears throat> uh, and they were all very positive. And, uh, but one of my subscribers was like, well, why don't you like to hard liquor reviews, you know. Problem is, is Paul the Pipe Guy is a beer drinker, and I, I don't, I do enjoy hard liquor, but it beats me up bad. And uh, so I, I steer away from hard liquor, but uh, good suggestion. So anyways, uh, I'm Paul the Pipe Guy, live from Rochester, New York, Happy pipe smoking, pipe smokers, over.
end.